I'm Lucy McKenzie. I'm from Glasgow and I live in Brussels. I'm always interested in the way that different periods or aesthetics, they kind of layer up either accidentally or on purpose to create something really kind of complex. I want my work to in a way be part of that, even though uh, it's emulating the techniques or maybe attitudes from a different period. I don't think there's any point in being hung up trying to look really contemporary because you just are, even if you're using techniques from the 1930s. After visiting several stations, all a little bit outside of town, it was clear that the Sudbury Town Station would be the best one. It was above ground, it is of extreme uh, design and uh, historical interest. And the advertising was really to a minimum. And because it was so out of town, it would even be like possible to think about using it. You'll see billboards on both of the platforms, east and west, and the images contain a little bit of the surroundings, so there's these blue hoardings, and I incorporated them in one and then a kind of concrete fence in another, so the, it becomes clear to whoever's looking at it that those images were absolutely made for that, that spot. They mimic the language of advertising without saying anything really clearly. So on one billboard, you see uh, two rows of people all reading the same paperback book. I'd been looking at the work of a Hungarian graphic artist called Kato Lukács and I found a poster of hers and it had this text in Hungarian which when I translated it said everyone's cognac which I read as being what we would say like everyone's cup of tea or in Germany they say everyone's beer and I thought okay this is in a way people under understand that this is what it means but not as direct as everyone's cup of tea. And then also the figures in the poster, they're all a little bit caricatures of different kind of social classes. If we think about how important ideas of diversity are now in representation and it's super important that that is so um, considered now. And I liked with this image that it looked like a very like well, maybe like the third, like a the more like primitive idea of what representation would have meant there, where you know everybody's white, but at least they're like different social classes. The other billboard has no text apart from my kind of vague signature, and it's for uh, cosmetics. It's for a lipstick. I knew if it was we could do an advert that was so big, it should really have this kind of it should really be an advert, and nothing is more advert than a huge, beautiful woman's glamorous face with a kind of lipstick. If you saw it out of the corner of your eye, you could also think it was like a cigarette advert. Maybe it's kind of skirting the edge of what is allowed or isn't, but that's also kind of the point to, to do public art or to do art. Of course, I know the London Transport Museum, but I'd never been to the depot before. It's always great to see things en masse in this kind of uncurated way. This is a really nice one here. It's quite a larger scale than most of them. Proposed platform finishes I think. I was a doll's house freak as a child and I'm really interested in scale, either one-to-one -one scale and how that makes you feel or things in miniature or oversized and the, the interplay of like when you take something small and broke big or something big and you make it small, I guess coming from maybe from childhood. Even though you can do models on CAD or SketchUp now, I still need to kind of make a physical model. I mean, those fundamental things about just like volumes, proportions, utility, is really pared down. I mean, there's not an awful lot of ornaments, so it really becomes about the way that the person kind of travels through the station. It's very, very elegant. The person who enters the station, they will first encounter both the posters, which will be placed around this old kiosk, which is a wonderful period feature of the station, which is still there. And they will see the scale model of the station. So they'll be able to see the artworks in miniature. What I would like is for people to, to see the different elements and then revisit them and on the second time, understand that they, they all connect. So there's a little story with the model. We were installing it last night and these lamp posts which are 
handmade by me and model making is not my forte. <laughs> and some of the little lamps were, one was missing and we thought it had fallen on the floor, where could it be? And I just found this little stone and I used the stone from the station as a replacement. You have to be able to think on your feet a little bit. That's the difference between a, a real scale model and an artist scale model is that you can kind of have some personal touches. So in this one, RP Gossip, he's done, or his studio has done something really smart, which is make a, a difference between the, the important new information, which is all the, the lines, with the map as recessive by keep if you see the difference in tone between the, the names of the station and the names of the places they're receding. So you have all the detail, but nothing kind of overwhelms the important details, which is the, the transport map. And of course, I was very interested in this part up here because it's the part of London, which is depicted in the piece for Sudbury Town. And for my work, I emulated the way that they define the roads by having an inner and outer colour with the name of the street coming through. So in the work of Harry Perry, that continues, but she has even more personal detail, like she'll write on her map, there's a very nice ruin here, or there's a really good pub here. And uh, that is amazing to me that she could put so much of her own personality and her own subjectivity into something which is basically a public information <laughs> poster. The ceiling paintings will only really be seen by the public if they're in the waiting room. And the places marked on the map are, some of them are contemporary and some are from the past. So things like the first Smith's Crisps factory was there. So there's a bag of crisps. So if you just go with, say, Google Maps, then you get guided in certain ways. So it was getting the balance between a lot of different, yeah, what different people would feel would be important places to put there. And those uh, ceiling maps have been hand-painted. It's a really hard job to paint on the ceiling with all the blood running out of your arm. So I had to think about them as something that could be translated from my sketches in a straightforward, rational way. And that's really the strength of decorative painting. It's all about using the right materials at the right time with the right tools to get effects. And if you do it correct, it all comes together and uh, you have this kind of illusion. And I just know the, the pleasure of, if you've got somewhere to wait, if you've got a map to look at, you can just spend hours trying to spot the mistakes, uh, trying to see the places you know. So I wanted to connect the artwork to the station, to the area, to the history, to kind of integrate all those things through something as simple as a wall painting.